Good afternoon from beautiful Barcelona. I am Alexis Roch, CEO of SciTech DiploHub, the Barcelona Science and Technology Diplomacy Hub. Thank you so much for joining us today for this online event on city-led science diplomacy in the framework of the Berlin Science Week. Today, we'll delve into the increasingly relevant role of cities in global governance and discuss how metropolises across borders are working together to address our most pressing challenges and implement the 2030 Agenda. Some of the most relevant advances in the history of urban governance were actually developed in response to public health crisis similar to the one we are living today. From the plague of Athens in the fifth century BC, which brought deep changes in the city's organization, laws and identity to the black death in the middle ages, which transformed the balance of class power in European societies, health crises rarely failed to leave their mark on cities and their public policy. Today, while hundreds of millions of citizens are being confined at home, cities across borders and their research and innovation ecosystems are fostering collective responses against the pandemic by sharing data, scientific knowledge, and best practices. In fact, in the last decade, an increasing number of cities have been defining their strategies for international relations and defining mechanisms that ensure an integral approach to foreign affairs and an effective coordination among its science, technology, and, and public policy stakeholders as global perspectives and policies from different regions have become increasingly available to, to local arenas. In 2018, Barcelona became the world's first city to deploy a science and technology diplomacy strategy, leveraging the potential of the city's knowledge and innovation ecosystem for global public good. Backed by leading research centers, universities, nonprofits, startups, and the city government, at SciTech DiploHub, we have positioned Barcelona as a global laboratory in science and technology diplomacy for cities around the world. In a similar way, in the last month, Mexico City launched a chair on diplomacy and scientific heritage. Paris set up the first international database of live projects on societal impacts of the pandemic. The Hague adopted a sustainable energy sector as a central part of its new economic vision. Montreal is actively working to foster artificial intelligence for, for the common good. Oxford appointed just last week its first its first chief scientist, scientist, scientist advisor to the city government, or for example, Geneva launched recently a project to bridge its scientific and international relations organizations based in the city. As you can see, cities are increasingly recognized as crucial actors to many multilateral agendas set to define the future of international affairs through science, technology, and innovation. However, how does COVID-19 reshape our current understanding of cities and its role in economic and social progress. How can cities deploy their science diplomacy strategies to deal with current and, and future challenges? How can they leverage their research and innovation ecosystems to foster new global alliances? How can city governments and local communities reach beyond their borders to build new collaborative networks for shared learning and action? Shed light on some of these questions today, we are delighted to welcome five city leaders from The Hague, Paris, Barcelona, Montreal, and Mexico City. We have with us uh, Laya Bonet, uh, Deputy Mayor for 2030 Agenda and Digital Transition. Molt bona tarda, Laya. We have uh, Saskia Bruins, the The Hague's Deputy Mayor, Alderman for Economic Affairs, International Affairs, and Municipal Services. Huda Avon, Saskia. François William Coteau, responsible of Smart City IT Innovation and Higher Education, Deputy Mayor of Montreal. Bonjour. Hi, bonjour. And Sadi Larlou, Director of the Institute for Advanced Study of the City of Paris. Bonsoir, Sadi. Bonsoir. And Ophelia Angulo, Under Secretary of for Education, Science, Technology and Innovation of the Government of the City of Mexico. Buenos dias. Hello, good morning. Welcome and thank you so much for joining us today. In June 2020, the municipal government of The Hague adopted a new economic vision, which will serve as a roadmap for the city's economic policy for the coming years. The vision aims to broaden the city's economic base by developing three international attractive sectors, legal and policy capital, security delta, and impact city. Saskia, how does the city harness its business activity, knowledge networks, and, and technology development towards this internationalization strategy? 
some people might worry that the sense of urgency around climate action built during the last years might disappear in the context of the current pandemic. What projects is the Hague developing to maintain momentum, especially in the field of energy transition? Okay. Thank you very much, Alexis. It's a very important question you're asking, and it's a very big question you're asking. Um, and, and not the most easy one, but I completely agree how important it is that um, that knowledge we we have, that we share it more and more with our, our, our fellow cities all over the world. Uh, the city of The Hague is uh, part of the 100 Resilient Cities uh, movement. And um, I must say this, this, this last year, this last half year in Corona times, we have uh, a lot of um, uh, connection and uh, discussions with other countries on how things are going. And in fact, this is more and more yeah, overwhelming uh, this, 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 yeah, the sorrows about the future uh, on, on our economic strategy, because we still keep it um, uh, ahead and we want to work on it very much. And we have been working on it for a long time. So I'd like to tell you something about this uh, economic vision and, and, this, and the security delta, something about our smart city development and, uh, and a bit on the COVID uh, uh, plan we, uh, we made. Um, I think uh, 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 when it comes to international, uh, the city of The Hague is known as international city of peace and justice. Uh, and we add security to this uh, 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 nowadays because it's very important, not only physical security, but more and more the cyber security. And um, well, The Hague has traditionally been strong in the field of legal and policy security and impact. And this is mainly due to the many of international government organizations we have in The Hague, such as NATO, Europol, OPCW, and the International Criminal Court. And they are all based in our city. But also because of the knowledge, uh, the expertise, and the innovations that entrepreneurs, researchers, and students work on the whole year round. Uh, four universities, we don't have our own university, but the four universities from cities around us all have their departments uh, in our city, this, so we can use the best part which suits uh, us uh, best. And uh, this is uh, Leiden University, uh, Erasmus University, uh, the Delft University of Technology. And so we're very proud to this uh, cooperation. Um, we support developments, we support innovation, bringing networks together, and we like to foster new collaboration and projects. And one of the initiatives is uh, the Hague Security Delta which we co-founded with public and private partners in 2013 and has since grown into an organization with more than 300 partners and strong international network and footprint. And this is most, um, uh, it's tasked to develop the cybersecurity ecosystem and help create the optimal conditions for innovation and for business within this field of cybersecurity. And together with our regional development organization, it's called Innovation Quarter, uh, this security delta also assists uh, entrepreneurs with their international ambitions by doing to stimulating export and uh, trade and, um, and make contacts with the uh, um, with, uh, same organizations, same entrepreneurs uh, overseas or in other countries. And um, about COVID, we last, last week we um, presented a recovery plan uh, with a lot of uh, a big additional budget to help residents, businesses, and organizations, and we try to discover um, that we have to 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 um, to develop these parts of e economy and these parts of the, of of, um, of 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 our economy that um, we want to be less dependent. I must say on the sectors that are affected with COVID now. Uh, so we try to broaden our uh, our economic uh, view. And uh, we will do this by uh, to, have to give more and more um, um, now attention to a new economy by stimulating knowledge and stimulating technology and innovation. And to invest in the economy of the future is so important for being more uh, more resilient in, uh, in bad times. And, and in that way, uh, in the international uh, co-working is, is also very important. And uh, for the, the last thing I want to say is that um, uh, we recently opened our living lab. Uh, this is a, a, a laboratory 
uh, op Scheveningen, near the beach. En uh, and, and near the dunes is a, a good, a nice nature uh, uh, environment to do, um, uh, um, yeah, to have a kind of test bed for digital innovations and smart city um, innovations. And um, we really like to, 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 uh, to uh, ask the, the neighbors, the people who live there to be part of, of that. And um, for this um, more international collaboration of digitalization, we take part in the Council of Global Cities uh, of the CIOs, the CGCC. Uh, the, our city council organized to advance government through facilitating collaboration and communication in order to leverage technology and best practices among cities around the world. And the council members and the local government at large. And Barcelona and Paris are council members as well. Um, and I heard only very good uh, things about this. And to close, um, something about this um, uh, the uh, Impact City program. We, trans we, we really support the front runners in the transition to a new, uh, new economy and sustainability and equality and core, core values like, the, like this. And the energy transition is overall a very big uh, item. Working very hard on new wind parks, um, wind energy parks in the North Sea, and uh, and also uh, some um, very new um, parts of an, um, or, uh, a very new, sorry, excuse me. It's a, very, a new development is uh, the geothermal energy, mm -hmm. and uh, we are the first city uh, in the Netherlands that is developing geothermal source in the densely populated area. And we really like to share this experience for the cities who also have this, um, this possibilities with your ge ge geothermal uh, energy. So I'll keep it to this. Thank you so much. Uh, there's a lot to do. And we're all facing um, difficult times, but still going strong, I hope. Definitely. And the examples you share about Impact City, the new The Hague vision for 2030, or, 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 or these projects of test beds or, 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 yeah. or sandbox uh, testing for new technologies in the city. I'm sure that those are topics that many of other, uh, our fellow speakers will, will have the chance to share about how are they doing in their cities. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Saskia, for, for your insights about uh, The Hague. Recently, Barcelona presented its first ever international relations plan, which aims at structuring Barcelona's city diplomacy efforts to foster an urban model that places sustainability, human rights, and economic prosperity uh, at the center of this strategy. Innovation, digital, and science diplomacy goals are also included in the plan to foster the city's leadership and contribution to sustainable development and global challenges. Furthermore, Barcelona is active in several urban networks, such as ICLEI, the local governments for sustainability. Uh, it hosts the headquarters of United Cities and local governments, and is also an active member of CIP40 and EuroCities. Laya, what are the potential benefits of cities' international engagement and mobilization of resources to support external <laughs> efforts? And from your perspective as deputy mayor of Barcelona, how can global cities incorporate science, technology, and innovation diplomacy as a mechanism to advance in the achievement of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development? Uh, good afternoon to everyone, and, and thank you, Alexis and uh, SciTech DiploHub team for organizing this event as part of the Berlin Science Week. It's a pleasure uh, to share this virtual stage with colleagues from cities who feel so close to Barcelona and with whom uh, we work so well at the Euro European and international level. Uh, your question is indeed very relevant, and it touches the core of our international action. Why do we do city diplomacy? In Barcelona, we have always structured our international action around the basic objectives that allowed us to justify investing time and resources in international relations. First, at a local level, we work with fellow cities and in the framework of multilateral spaces such as city networks to exchange knowledge and practices so as to strengthen the quality of the provision of public services in Barcelona. Second, we also seek to consolidate the city of Barcelona as a global actor with its own voice on the Mediterranean, European and global stage. 
And third, we work internationally to reinforce the international promotion of the city to attract talent and opportunities. These are the three components of a classic approach to city diplomacy. They remain relevant today, but they are not enough. Living conditions in Barcelona are increasingly shaped by uh, global dynamics and decisions, and they limit our ability as cities and citizens to govern ourselves. So if we are saying that Barcelona wants to be uh, a, a rights-based city uh, that fosters the ecological transition and promotes a human-centered digital transformation, we need to acknowledge that we have clear limitations due to national, European and global frameworks. During the COVID crisis, uh, this need for effective international action that transforms local realities has uh, been very, very, very clear. In this global health emergency, international cooperation between states has been more necessary than ever, and it has not worked. The World Health Organization has been questioned by the world's major powers. Faced with this, cities have made a virtue of necessity, even with restricting international norms. In Barcelona, we have received tens of thousands of medical supplies from Chinese cities, such as Shanghai or Shenzhen, uh, with whom we have been collaborating for a long time. We have worked intensively with Italian cities and the rest of Europe for policy exchanges that were working on tackling the pandemic and to learn from each other at a time when minimizing improvisation was key. Another concrete example is the work that we do with the Cities Coalition for Digital Rights. With UCLG, EuroCities, UN Habitat, uh, and the Office of uh, the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, we form part of this thematic city alliance that is led by Barcelona, Amsterdam, and New York. The coalition is a platform for technical exchange and for advocacy action to advance digital rights and counts on more than 50 member cities. During April and May, the idea of a contact tracing app began to gain strength to quickly identify the transmission between people. From the city's coalition, we understood that these apps could pose real threats to digital rights in relation to privacy, data, transparency, and others. That's why we quickly co coordinated in order uh, to issue recommendations uh, uh, in the de development and implementation of these apps that guarantee the digital rights of, uh, of citizens. Specifically, we were concerned about three things. First, we said that contact tracing apps could not replace epidemiological measures related to public health. They needed to be seen as uh, supplementary uh, to a comprehensive approach that included large-scale testing, social distancing, manual contact tracing, vaccine development, and so on. Second, we were concerned about the need to respect the privacy of citizens, and therefore we called uh, on anonymity, anonymity, uh, transparency, and control to be ensured regarding both the means used and the data collected. And third, uh, we were worried about the impact of the digital divide on the inequality effects of this app. Um, in Barcelona, for instance, access to smartphones is very high on average. But there is a segment of our uh, elderly, especially those who live in low-income neighborhoods, that do not have one. And we all needed to be mindful of this. This is why back in May, with the city's coalition of digital rights, we issued a set of recommendations to guide the development and application of a contact tracing app by governments and big tech. These recommendations call for digital technologies related to COVID to be integrated with 10 specific principles, such as privacy by design, uh, participation or openness and transparency, among others. Uh, with this uh, and the support from uh, the United Nations Agency mm -hmm. uh, and, and liaising with our national governments, we contributed effectively to a mood in public opinion that was sounding the alarm for digital rights in times of COVID. And we achieved, for instance, here in Spain, that the final version of the contact tracing gap developed by the Spanish government would follow most of our recommendations. 
I think these two examples show we understand effective and transformative city diplomacy. And this is what we are trying to do uh, in an emergency context uh, through the Barcelona International Relations Strategy presented, as you said, in uh, 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 some months ago in July. Thank you so much, Laya. Definitely, this example on, on, on tapping in different uh, on different international networks, international institutions, national authorities on what's the, what are the implications of digital technologies on, on privacy, human rights uh, in the context of the current pandemic is a great example of science and technology diplomacy from the city perspective. Thank you so much for for sharing this with us. I'm I'm I'm, I'm confident that some of our other fellow speakers would like to to add on this. In order to better face the pandemic, Mexico City has strengthened impactful collaborations between scientific research, the private sector, and, and public institutions based uh, in the city recently. Ophelia, what types of mechanisms uh, seem most promising to leverage scientific and technological know-how to improve policy making and increase influence on, on, on global issues? What projects and initiatives are you currently developing in Mexico City to elevate the role of science, technology, and cities in foreign action and international cooperation. Thank you, very, thank you very much, Alexis, for the invitation to participate in this Berlin Science Week. It is my privilege to represent um, Dr. Rosaura Ruiz Gutierrez, um, and I want to express an apology for her not being able to join us today um, for other reasons. Um, but uh, it is uh, very important to um, express to you that uh, this uh, um, inclusion of science into the human rights has been very, very important to the city of Mexico. Since uh, 2017, um, when the first constitution of the city was implemented, the, the right to science was already included there. Uh, even before the national um, government uh, decided to do that, um, this, uh, this ladder uh, took place um, in uh, uh, just recently, 2019, when uh, the, um, uh, the constitution was reformed to include this right. So Mexico City was, uh, has been pioneered in, in, in um, um, including the, the science, uh, the right to science to the population. So it's not, um, it's, it's not uh, a recent that uh, the city has been um, very, very much interested on um, scientific knowledge to uh, take uh, 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 policy uh, decisions. So I, I want to express a few examples of what the city has uh, done uh, this, uh, this year to face uh, the pandemic of uh, COVID-19. The first thing the city did was uh, to, um, in, to establish a scientific committee. And within this scientific committee, the decision since the beginning of the pandemic in Mexico last March, um, this scientific committee um, meets every week to uh, revise the actions that the city has been taking and also to um, make uh, new decisions and to change what's been working and what not, but also to um, finance uh, research uh, projects. Um, so this scientific committee uh, has come together uh, because Previous to the pandemic, the city had, be, had um, implemented a network of institutions. Uh, it was not only institutions for, from higher education institutions, but also from national health institutions. And this was very, very important for the, to, to face the pandemic. If we hadn't had that um, network of institutions, uh, national health institutions uh, being together in this uh, network, it could have been more difficult to face the pandemic. So I want to start with that, um, with that important decision that the, that the city made. Another important decision the city made was to uh, make, uh, to establish um, a factory to, to produce uh, masks. 
to, uh, you know, for protection of uh, the not only the, the 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 people, but also the the health uh, uh, the, the the health uh, practitioners uh, at the hospitals. So right away after the beginning, the, the pandemic began, um, the city, uh, along with UNAM, um, so put together a group to establish the, the mask factory. And because at the moment, uh, there was a lack of, of masks. Um, we couldn't uh, buy it anywhere, and it was necessary to produce them here. And that was a very, a very um, wide decision, uh, scientifically based, because uh, we um, uh, take we took profit of the knowledge at UNAM and what they had uh, made already in this in this area. And right away, the factory was implemented, and and uh, up to now, it has produced uh, millions of masks, and, and it has been very, very health, helpful for the health community. Um, a third uh, action that we have made is to uh, put together a team of um, research institutions that were able to uh, implement uh, the testing for SARS-CoV. And uh, it was because of that that the city has been able to uh, make many, many uh, thousands of, of tests uh, um, a week, and, um, and and that was also uh, a very a good decision. Um, for instance, the Genomic National Institute um, put together a new lab with higher capacities to to implement um, this testing. And as you know, this is not an easy uh, issue because it has the test, you know, the, the PCR. Uh, test uh, uh, the Berlin uh, test uh, has to be approved by the uh, health authorities in Mexico, and they it, it, and we did all that uh, in a very uh, fast way, in a, in a very uh, rapid uh, rapidly. And um, since uh, since May, uh, the number of tests uh, being done in the city has been increasing uh, rapidly, and this has been a very good strategy to. Uh, uh, stop the, the the propagation of the pandemic in Mexico City. Um, the the last thing that I want to mention is that, as you mentioned at the beginning of the introduction, Mexico City implemented a chair of diplomacy, uh, science and heritage diplomacy, and along with uh, international uh, institutions and also with. Uh, um, uh, Latin American countries that are interested in this type of um, uh, projects. And what we want is to make a regional uh, strategy to make uh, science available, the benefits of science available to the society, to the, to the people. And uh, since uh, the um, chair was uh, uh, implemented with the help also of Silvestre, which is the, 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 the most important research center in Mexico, and UNAM, uh, we submitted the chair to UNESCO, and we are expecting the results of that, um, uh, uh, um, of, of that, uh, uh, the results that they, that they do. So um, we are very um, um, proud of being able to do that, and we hope to keep increasing the interest in the region and be able to uh, share this experience with other countries uh, in Latin America. Uh, so I want to thank you again for the opportunity to share these experiences with you and look forward to uh, collaborating also with uh, Europe and Barcelona uh, particularly. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ophelia. Indeed, the examples you shared with us were really insightful, knowing that the city of Mexico is committed on this shared on science diplomacy, cooperating together with UNESCO, and the examples you mentioned about bringing scientific evidence into policy making at the city level, as well as cooperating with universities, like the examples you shared about UNAM, uh, are, are really good examples on how cities can, can, can use science and scientific knowledge when, when tackling situations like the one we, we are living today. 
deepening our culture of innovation uh, will probably or definitely require far more collaboration across sectors and between cities as in the same way that many of our speakers have already shared today. Um, we need an effective collaborative infrastructure to build partnerships and move to action addressing these complex problems that we are mentioning today in a holistic way. Francois, how can cities rapidly scale their culture of innovation to create uh, sustainable smart cities that can better serve the generations to come? What governments in what governance innovation would you say that are needed to accelerate this transformation? And how is Montreal specifically deploying new technologies and data infrastructures for social goods? Hi, Alexis. Uh, th thank you for uh, giving me the uh, opportunity to respond to this question. And hi, everyone. Uh, happy to be here with you uh, today. Uh, it's a very important for us uh, to talk about this because Montreal uh, innovating uh, in a lot of ways uh, during the, the past years and uh, for the further years is very important for us. Uh, as you know, major cities around the world are funding new urban research projects and collaborating with scientists to develop uh, and implement policies and programs. Uh, this collaboration is essential uh, to deal with the effectivity and the threat of uh, this crisis, such as the pandemic and the climate change, as, uh, as you know. Uh, for example, in Montreal, more than a million uh, a year is spent on research and development. For us, it's a very important and the benefits it's on the, the community is, are undeniable. Supported by cutting edge scientific research, uh, we have revised our human planning and practices, developed the data governance policies called the data charter, and evaluate the social acceptability of the Internet of Things, et cetera, et cetera. In the same way, uh, the city of Montreal has also developed an initiative named the Carrefour uh, de Recherche Urbaine of Montreal. Uh, this uh, important center facilitated the, the dialogue with universities and fostered partnership between the cities and the many research centers on the territory. Uh, it gave us the opportunity to share more data and research resources and great importance for the, uh, for the city. In fact, uh, by collaborating with academics, uh, we uh, are able to uh, more effectively and efficiently strengthen the resilience of the city and develop a, a more innovative project, of course. Uh, this material works help the city uh, to give uh, to go even further in order to achieve and various goals, including the UN uh, 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Uh, it's from this perspective that uh, we uh, that we've developed several projects in the city. Uh, for example, uh, in the borough of Rosemont La Petite Patrie, where I'm the mayor since uh, 2009. Uh, now, uh, we recently launched an action for planned ecological transition and sustainable development. Uh, through this plan, we are thinking uh, the way uh, in which all the borough's decisions are made and carried out. Uh, we want to put citizens in the environment uh, at the center of all our decisions and initiatives. Uh, these plans involve active participation of the Quebec University of Montreal, research group that ensure its success, and, uh, of course, evaluation. Uh, in other ways, Montreal, we advance science diplomacy in many ways. We share best practices and new knowledge with partnership. Uh, we participate in international research project uh, Le Observatoire de Vivre Ensemble. Both elected official and civil uh, service participate in, in international events to share experiences and best practices too. Uh, the city of Montreal won in 2018 the, the Canadian Smart City Challenge and was rewarded $50 million for five years. This project called Montreal en commun uh, has three uh, most uh, components. First, the urban mobility, which include neighborhood mobility and the city-wide transportation. Local food security and urban agriculture, which focuses on the importance of resilient and integrating the local food system. Data collection and governance, of course. And uh, researchers, of course, are involved in all facets of that project. Uh, and it was developed by drawing uh, on the creativity and innovation of local actors including think tanks, social enterprise, and uh, NGOs. Uh, this would help us uh, to pave the way for more inclusive, resilient, and greener city. It aims to improve and diversity and sustainable transportation option 
and strengthen the local food supply by encouraging collaboration and the sharing of infrastructure. As we know, COVID has challenged the way uh, we move within the city and it also made and appreciate the importance of local food. So that's why we believe that food security and mobility are also the component of the UN's 2030 agenda. To fulfill this agenda, cities will need to collaborate with their local innovation leaders, researchers, and citizens, of course. They will also need to share best practices to facilitate the implementation of new ideas. In the next months and the years, all effort will be made to meet our collective goals and to be sure that Montreal will more be resilient in the future. This actual crisis shows us that it's more important than ever to improve our collaboration and partnership with other cities and put science diplomacy among cities in order to help our citizens to live better during that various health and climate crisis. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Francois. Uh, we can see that is a constant that, I mean, all cities are working uh, actively on green transition, on cooperating with the different stakeholders in the city, working in science, technology, universities, uh, and so on, in order to do this transition, cooperating with other cities. So we can see that all your cities are working in the same direction, and and uh, hopefully you're, you're cooperating on many of these on these projects through your formal or less formal cooperation or using or using those networks of cities you some of you were mentioning you are your active part of. Paris has as well a long tradition as a city of science and humanities and the Paris Institute for Advanced Study has been one of the city's historical partners and a pivotal instrument with its within its scientific strategy. Um, Sadi, how it's Paris leveraging its research and innovation ecosystem to foster new global alliances. How is the Institute uh, operating as a commons, as a convener of academic thought and activities across humanities and social sciences? From your perspective in Paris, how can collaborative bottom-up processes uh, can be leveraged to face challenges like the current pandemic? Well, thank you, Alexis, and thank you for, uh, for inviting us. Uh, to this very interesting talk. As, as you said, uh, Paris is, has been a home for science and humanities for quite a while. And then we have over 100,000 scientists uh, personnel uh, working uh, in the greater Paris. We've got lots of universities. We believe in science and the city does have an active policy in the domain. And there is, for example, an adjunct mayor uh, dedicated to uh, scientific research and education. And the city is just as my uh, colleagues uh, mentioned, is also a, a member of many initiatives such as the C40, EuroCities, City Science Initiative. It was in the 100 Resilient Cities, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So uh, I'm, I'm the director of this Paris Institute for Advanced Studies, which is an example of, of what a city can do and what Paris does. And it's a sort of a proof of its commitment to science and especially social science, which is uh, something that we really need in, in these uh, difficult times. Every year, the Paris Institute for Advanced Studies invites uh, 20 to 30 uh, top scientists from over the world, uh, outside of France, uh, to stay uh, together in Paris, to in excellent working conditions, to work on a topic of their choice. And this ensures a critical mass of high quality brains, and their work usually is very relevant to the current societal problems. This does irrigate the local scientific network with new ideas. It creates strong networks for cooperation. It also serves the scientific diplomacy of Paris and its universities. So I think that what's interesting to see is that uh, beyond this sort of classic way of operating scientific diplomacy for a city, uh, our institute operates as a commons, and Paris loves commons. Uh, that was actually one of the, uh, uh, in the campaign of the current mayor, one of the uh, main uh, ideas, but we've been doing that for quite a while. And we also carry initiatives for the common good. For example, as early as, as April, as you mentioned, we set up the first international database of life projects on, on the societal impact of the pandemic, because we knew that, I mean, there was the... Uh, you know, the, the medical, the, the health problem, but the, the huge wave, uh, the tsunami would be the economic impact. And so we set that up to share experience. I think that we've got over 750 projects now and there coming from all over the world. The idea is to share between cities. Uh, we do believe that, that the solution will be to share all these local initiatives and that this is the right place to, to operate. 
at city level. So if you consult WPRN.org, the World Pandemic Research Network, I'm going to put the, the link on the chat and, and also yeah. other stuff I'm, I'm talking about so you can consult that. We also have uh, a series of analysis of what goes on about, you know, uh, uh, what people can take from all these live publications early, uh, early on without waiting for the publications, what the research that is being done now all over the world. We also have other initiatives like uh, organizing conferences on resilience and territorial innovation, because again, we think that resilience must be designed at local level because this is where it happens. It has to be distributed, right? And uh, we try to disseminate positive future visions with uh, uh, competitions to make people come up with things in, in you know, videos or, or cartoons or whatever. So I said, uh, it's an interesting models of commons because in terms of economic level, these things cost money, right? So how can you do this when you're a city? And so the, the solution we took in Paris is, is a model, but with step leverage, right? So the city of Paris provides uh, the facility and the basic money. And then the universities, 10 universities, the major universities in Paris also chip in money, right? And that's a next layer. And then the state and then the European Commission and then international universities pay the salary of the people who come here during their sabbatical. And so the leverage effect is very high, which shows that when we start cooperating, uh, we can do very large uh, thing at large scale. And of course, the Institute remains an independent scientific institution because it would be healthy that, that you know, we would be completely dependent on the city. It is our belief that the solutions of these big challenges will be local, that they will be collaborative. Uh, we try to organize science on that basis. We in Paris will do everything we can to foster scientific collaboration. We are completely open to these collaborations with the uh, cities. And we think that is the right level uh, to implement solutions. So we are completely open, right to us. We're there as, as a place to reach, to collaborate between cities. Thank you so much, Sari. Um, I, I really know the work you do because, I mean, I've been in Paris before and now I've met your institute. And it's a, it's a true example of, of science diplomacy on a, on a very collaborative structure between different universities, the, the city government and, and other stakeholders are, as you were saying. Um, we have many questions from our, our audience uh, coming from over 25 different countries. But before opening the floor for questions, I would like to ask to all five panelists, what actions do you consider from, that your respective cities should prioritize within the roadmap in order to enhance international cooperation and, and create uh, meaningful interactions between their, their knowledge and innovation ecosystems? So what's next for your cities? in terms of this international cooperation in the scientific or, 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 or knowledge uh, ecosystem. Um, Who would like to go first? Or if you want, we can, we can follow the same order of the previous questions. Would you like to start, Saskia? Yes, that's OK. I can, I can give you a, a quick answer. Um, I think this, um, um, well, we all want to be the resilient city. And, and this co collaboration and working together is so important. And I think it's this. Um, what, 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 what work I do think we'll have to, to organize a better collaborative infrastructure. Uh, in that sense, that the role of innovation hubs and networks, such as, uh, for instance, in the Hague uh, Security Delta, what uh, what I talked about, um, then then they can will they they can come uh, become even more important. And those hubs have to know the local ecosystem. And if there is an international network of hubs, they can also help connect all innovators and entrepreneurs so that they can co collaborate. So that's not only the city and the municipalities, but the hubs and the 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 the, the, yeah, the, the, the scientists maybe who can uh, who can uh, work on this and the entrepreneurs. So I think that will be one thing what I would like to um, what to, to to discover. Thank you. Thank you, Saskia. Laya. Um, thanks, Alexis. Uh, I'll be brief. Uh, the processes of defining the United Nations agenda, 2030 agenda, new, new European agenda, Paris agreements, have benefited from the active contribution of cities. Um, 
and, and all of them have had their translation in Barcelona. We have a climate plan that raised the city's ambitions uh, through a climate emergency declaration. We also presented just last week uh, the localization of the 2030 agenda in Barcelona, adapting the global targets to our own reality and, and context. And by the end of this month, uh, we will be presenting Barcelona's first voluntary local review. And we are also implementing a digital inclusion plan that aims uh, to ensure that income, gender, age, and educational level do not define the opportunities you can get from digitalization and access to internet. And much of it, we are doing so acknowledging that the city council cannot do it all um, on our own. Uh, we, the local governments, cannot do all this only together. We need all the talent, all the ambition, and all the intelligence of the cities. And, and this implies solid innovation ecosystems in a broad sense, universities and academia, private sector and startups, uh, community organizations, past and present students and other relevant sectors. And their public leadership, we must be able to carry out open, multidisciplinary and transparent, transparent innovation processes that generate effective uh, solutions for the challenges that lie ahead. And we have seen today, as, as we have seen today, sorry, um, um, this is also the case in many other cities across the world. We need to strengthen our cooperation to learn from each other and continue delivering for our cities. But we also need to build stronger ties among us to have our voice heard and shape national and international frameworks that determine our capacity to deliver. This is the kind of transformative city diplomacy I was mentioning earlier, uh, with experiences that we are all undergoing uh, in these challenging times. And I think this would be the way to go. Thank you, Alex. This. Thank you, Laia. Ophelia, would you like to share Mexico City perspective? Yes, yes. Thank you very much, Alexis. I couldn't, I couldn't agree more with Laia yeah, regarding the innovation ecosystem. The City Council cannot do all together. They need the international co cooperation. And there are three things that I would like to share with you uh, that the city is uh, uh, trying to do in the next uh, future. The first thing is uh, to bring the ECHO, the ECHO's network of uh, higher education institutions and uh, national health institutions to an international level. We would like to have international um, institutions being part of this network, we think that that collaboration can bring us more capacities to um, face the, the, the problems, the issues the city, the city has. That's the first thing that we would like to have. Um, I, can, I can advance to you that um, Helsinki is part of this network and UNESCO is also part of this network and we would like to include more institutions in that, in that network. The second thing is that we have just recently uh, put together the uh, program for science, technology, and innovation uh, development for the uh, in, towards uh, 2040. So for the next uh, 20 years, we have put together a series of um, uh, goals. Uh, two of them are, are are related to these topics and has to do with uh, policy making uh, scientific, scientifically based. Um, that's, that's one main objective of this program, and we are very proud to have come to put that into that program. The second thing in that uh, program is that international cooperation uh, towards the 23, uh, 2030 agenda goals. And um, we will do all we can to um, uh, help uh, achieve those goals in the agenda. And uh, finally, we would like to consolidate the chair of uh, di science diplomacy in the next uh, uh, years uh, to come with the uh, collaboration of all the countries in the, in, in the region, but also with the AAAS uh, help. We can uh, achieve that consolidation by uh, uh, implementing uh, human resources uh, preparation, these this topics of uh, uh, policy making scientifically based. Thank you very much for the opportunity to share these goals from Mexico. Thank you, Ophelia. Thank you so much. Francois. Yes, it's an important uh, question because uh, we have to uh, to go uh, faster with all solutions that we we need to be better 
uh, especially actually uh, with the crisis that we uh, we occur, it's very important for us to be uh, uh, flexible and more uh, and better to react for a better quality of life for our citizens. And as I, I explained uh, before, with the, the new project that we uh, we put in with uh, the uh, food security and mobility, uh, we uh, collaborated with the city of Lyon and uh, the city of Boston to implement some analysis, data analysis to be better. So we're sharing uh, best practices with data. How we can be better to plan, implement, and analyze the mobility that we just put in in our city and a different city. And we're just working with the researchers and higher education institution uh, in both cities and all these people working together uh, to uh, to put on a better collaboration between all these cities. Uh, for us, it's very important because all cities has some specialities and some very uh, good company institution to, to, to implement uh, different solutions. So when we can collaborate together, uh, it's for us an opportunity to to be better. Uh, it's the same thing that when we uh, we just share and just uh, announce our uh, data charter recently, we work with uh, the city of Nantes in uh, France, and they influence us to to be uh, better to to um, uh, you know uh, sh uh, manage the data with that with all the data that we collected in Montreal. And for us, it's very important to 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 be better with the, the managing of the data because as you said before in Montreal we have a, a big uh, a big hub of intelligence artificial and so for us uh, how we can be better to use that new technology but ethically it's very important to use it for the better quality of life of the citizen and to be sure that uh, that usage of that kind of technology uh, it's it's better for the common uh, the, the, the social and, and common interests, not only for the, uh, the the private company. So for us to uh, manage and to collaborate with other cities and how we can use the data uh, to be better, it's uh, it's the, the, the best thing that we can do now. And it's the most important thing that we're going to continue to do uh, in the future. Definitely. Uh, thank you so much, Francois. Sally. Well, thanks. I think the way you asked the question is interesting. I, I don't think I could prioritize. I mean, you know, our institute is just one of the many things that Paris is doing, and and uh, everything they do is interesting. And so the problem with but at the no, end no, of the day, no, resources no, are limited. No, no, but, but precisely, this is this is an old world way of seeing things. We have to do things. Uh, at the same time, we were very struck by the way the Chinese solved the problem of the pandemic, right? They started with a centralized system where, you know, they had to go to the central thing and then it didn't go well. And then they started doing city to city, region to region, and that worked. And so what I think is we must start now thinking differently in a parallel system where peer to peer uh, things. And so people who have one project or one problem can connect to people who have had the same problem somewhere else and start discussing and exchanging best practice without having to go to the center uh, and losing a lot of time and a lot of, you know, admin and, and stuff like that. And so I think it's, this is what we try to do with WPRN. I think it's crucial that we have an easy way to showcase all these projects so people who are interested in one specific thing can go immediately at the right level to the people who are in charge and not have to go through long detours. We are absolutely happy. And I'll make a, a, a concrete proposal. What we do, did for uh, the COVID with WPRN, we are ready to do this for all the cities who want to do this on any other kinds of project to help to bottom up things uh, to, to happen. And we can do that for free. Amazing. Thank you so, so, so much, Sadi, for, for your answer and also for challenging the question. Um, we're, we're gonna open the floor for some questions from, from, from our, our audience. Um, Xavier, uh, regarding the situation that many global cities are facing now, where when they were used to have a, a really vivid life and, and how the pandemic is affecting this, he's asking, Will the pandemic represent an end of the past worldwide trend of concentration in cities, concentration of talent, economy, knowledge, and so on? Are we facing a city's decline as a long-term effect of COVID-19? Who would like to answer to this question? 
not an easy one, but I'm pretty sure that many of you will be defending that this is not the end of cities. So we would like to know why your perspective, what's, your, what's the, the reason why you defend that? Maybe Saskia, you have you are also in charge of economic affairs at the, the city of The Hague. Uh, from an economic perspective, do you think that this is the end of, the, of cities? Because now maybe they will be attracting less talent or less economy because uh, everything is less concentrated in, in one single spot? No, no, I don't think so because there's a new, perspe new pers perspective uh, in the digitalization, but all, still the, the, the meeting and the being together will be a part of, um, uh, of prosperity and of economic growth. And I think the cities will, will still, there will maybe something will change, but cities will still be cities. Um, there has always been cities during <laughs> all ages. For different uh, pandemies, but um, now I think the cities will be staying very important uh, as a um, well a center of, of knowledge, a center of, of meeting, a center of education, a center of uh, creativity. Um, and so I'm, I'm not worried about this, but there are a lot of challenges we have to face. That's true. Definitely, thank you, uh, uh, Laya. Would you like to add on this? Oh. I, I agree with Saskia. It's true that the cities have been hit hardest by the virus, but I really think that cities are as alive as they have ever been. Uh, cities remain spaces for diversity, creativity, community making. In cities, we celebrate at the same time the differences that make each of us unique and, and, and unique and, and, and urban life that brings us together. And this is what makes cities special and the pandemic does not change this. A reason why the validity, the validity of cities has been questioned is, is population density, of course, uh, be, because it may enhance the transmission of the virus. Uh, we still have a lot to learn about how this virus works, but I do believe that we should take at least this pandemic as a warning to rethink the spaces we share in the city, as, as Saskia said. Uh, this means generating more quality public space, investing in public transport, reinforcing municipal services, and fostering innovation. Uh, so mm, I think really that cities are not dead, but rather we have an opportunity to transform cities for the better. Thank you, Laia. Um, we have uh, many more questions regarding, actually regarding resilience. Many of you mentioned uh, the word resilience and how you're working from different perspectives to make your cities more resilient from different, from, from different points of view. Pablo is asking, how can you, I mean, as, as city leaders, make your city's infrastructure resilient to change, generally speaking? Could be pandemics or climate change. Uh, could you cite a specific example developed by any of your cities on, on trying to make the city more more resilient? Sorry. I could give some uh, small examples. Uh, to, to fight against uh, heat, uh, there is this, this project of a uh, Cour Oasis in Paris to transform uh, the whole space of these yards in, in, in every school, and there's many of them, into places with trees and change the, the ground with the albedo of the ground uh, so that the water can come down and it's less hot. And so it, it shows that a distributed action, lots of small things, but in many places can have an impact. This is good for the, uh, for the students. I mean, this is good for the children. This is good for the city. This is good for the whole thing. Yeah. Yes. Uh... For us, it's, it's, it's quite difficult to, uh, to work on that because Montreal, it's a large city. There are two million people living in, in the island of Montreal. And then uh, what actually that we, uh, we face is that all the most activities of the economic activities is on the downtown and all the universities in downtown too. And so actually what we, we just experiment is that all people is working at home. Students are, are just study at home. And all the activities just move to the uh, to the uh, to the uh, to the borough to uh, to uh, to the neighborhood, and so people uh, are just leaving the uh, the downtown. And so we have to uh, imagine in the future how we can be more resilient when we face that kind of crisis, because the mobility is changing so rapidly. When a lot of people just abandon the. Uh, collective transportation and so they would be more walking more cycling 
And so they change all the perspective of how we plan the city. Of course, with the, the, the kind of weather of in, we have in Montreal, uh, actually, it's very uh, difficult. What we're going to do? Well, you're muted. We lost your sound for a while. Huh? Yeah, the sound okay. just got. So with the winter is coming, it's very difficult for us to, to think about how we can manage the uh, public uh, public space of occupation with when the, when the weather is so cold. And so we have to, 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 to think differently of uh, how we can be more resilient to face that kind of crisis. So it's, it, I think it's a, it's a good opportunity to rethink our planning of the city right now. So it's different. Uh, and so that's why I'm responding to the, the, the other question too. City is not dead. It's just an opportunity to be better. Well, I have the feeling that, Ophelia, would you, add, would you like to add something? Yes, yes. I wanted to share with you that uh, Mexico City, as you know, is, is, a, is a place where a lot of uh, earthquakes happen. So um, the population in Mexico City has learned the bad way, I mean, by experiencing those uh, uh, big uh, events. And, but uh, it, because things have changed uh, uh, in the past, you know, the way the, the, the population faced uh, the earthquake in, in, in 1986 uh, to the, la the, la the, the latest one in 1917. But we also have put together a group of scientists uh, specialized in resilience, and they have began by educating the people, you know, to prevent how to react to, to this uh, crisis. And I just wanted to share with you that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ophelia. I'm afraid that we are running out of time. We are actually really already out of, of, of schedule. Uh, we still have many questions, so I, I would like to encourage our audience to keep on with the conversation on, on our social media. If you follow SciTech Diplo Hub Twitter account or you follow the hashtag SciDeep Talks or Berlin Science Week, you will be able to continue with this conversa conversation. So we can wrap up here. Thank you so much, Laia, Saskia, Francois, Ophelia, and Tari, for this enlightening discussion. I think that many of you mentioned really points that you all agree on like uh, keep working on, 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 on this resilient perspective on many aspects, but building scientific knowledge, that this is not definitely not the end of cities. And, and well, there is plenty of opportunities to keep cooperating and working together for, 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 for the global good and obviously for the good of, of each one of your of citizens. And as we saw today, global cities are claiming a voice in international affairs on the basis of this emergent urban collective identity that some of our speakers were, were sharing with us today. They are interacting with the world through policies and practice developed on behalf of their local societies, engaging in foreign action with the aim of representing themselves and their interests to one another. In this context, as we saw today, science diplomacy can create a new and, and an important role for cities and redefine cities' geopolitical, political, and scientific relevance in the international arena. Cities are uniquely suited to translate their knowledge, resilience, and productivity into global progress, and they are critical in implementing solutions to challenges that respond to global logic, but that, that are manifested at the local level, such as the pandemic we are living today. Equipped with solid science and technology ecosystems, we can say that the global cities cannot turn a blind eye to humanity's greatest challenges. Thank you very much for being with us today. Follow us on our social media for more upcoming events and do not miss the rest of this outstanding Berlin Science.